Hey, shalom, and welcome to the parable of the vineyard. My name is Adam, and I welcome you. Today, we're going to be talking all about the eclipse that happened just a few days ago. If you hadn't heard, there's a lot of rumors and speculations as to what exactly eclipsed the sun. Most of us thought it was the moon. However, uh, if you weren't aware, there's actually a lot of other claims out there. I think it's incredibly important, and we should talk about it. Everything we cover today is going to be an article form found on parableofthevineyard.com. I'll make sure to put a link in the description box below and as a pinned comment. Lots to cover, so let's get right into it. So as many know, on 4824, something eclipsed the sun, causing a total blockage of light temporarily across the U.S. While the majority would confidently say it was the moon, there is a growing group of people who strenuously disagree. Over the past decade, there has been a shift within the body of Messiah and even without concerning the heavenly cosmology above. Thanks to the diligent research of some and the fair and honest reporting of others, truths have surfaced, giving us extensive reasons not to fully trust NASA nor the world governments for that matter. Because of this exodus of trust, some have thrown out the baby with the bathwater, as they say. The lack of trust for the mainstream narrative has been so severely removed that some conclude everything we hear is a lie. However, even scripture warns us from this type of behavior. Isaiah 8.12 says this, Do not call conspiracy all that this people calls conspiracy, and do not fear what they fear, nor be in dread. Before we go any further, I want to clarify that I'm not encouraging the body to put our trust in these agencies. However, we must be rooted and grounded in truth and not be tossed around with every wind of doctrine that comes our way just because we don't trust the authorities. We are encouraging the body to be grounded in the word. With this in mind, we would like to quickly cover our thoughts on the recent total solar eclipse that happened on April 8th, 2024. So, uh, was it Yahuwah, Satan, or man? By the way, just in case uh, you may not know, yod heh vav it's the Tetragrammaton. Um, uh, We understand the correct pronunciation is Yahuwah. Some of you may understand it differently. But this I'm referencing when I say Yahuwah. I'm referencing uh, our Heavenly Father, our Elohim. So, ultimately, the goal of this study is to determine who was in charge of this eclipse. Was it Yahuwah, Satan, or man? For those that may be unaware, there are four popular scenarios circulating. Number one, of course, the moon, M-O-O-N, that spells moon. And Elohim said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. That's Genesis 1.14. Because this is the mainstream understanding, many are leery of accepting it. Uh, Number two, Nibiru. Here's a quote from Wikipedia. The Nibiru Cataclysm is a supposed disastrous encounter between Earth and a large planetary object that certain groups believe would take place in the early 21st century. Believers in this doomsday event usually refer to this object as Nibiru or Planet X. The idea was first first put forward in 1995 by Nancy Leder, founder of the website Zeta Talk. Number three is Satan's abode or the Death Star Theory. To be fair and honest, this theory is so new to me that I don't even know where to begin. However, this is what I've been able to gather from the reports, in most cases, fruitless condemnation. They say that Satan has a kingdom that is in the sky, sort of like a Death Star, and this is the cause of solar and lunar eclipses. Supposedly, this information is nestled within ancient and occultist history. Here's a quote. The eclipse is not from Yah. The moon is a transparent orb of light, not a physical body. The thing causing the eclipse is Satan's abode, also known as the boat of Ra. That's why they can predict the eclipse and also is the reason the world wonders after them. This is quoted from an enthusiastic YouTube commenter. These are actually one of the, this is one of the nicer comments. As a side note, we will be able to show you exactly how and why NASA and others know when eclipses will happen before they do. Another quote, that ain't no moon. That's Satan's abode eclipsing the sun, which happens to look like an eye, the all seeing eye. Uh, Another enthusiastic YouTube commenter, plenty of credit was given to Satan, Ra and other deities during this sign. Number four, man-made objects. 
Lastly, there are many other rumors and theories of what could have eclipsed the sun this week. Man-made man objects. They say China has manufactured an artificial sun or even launched the sun into the atmosphere. Others proclaim it could have been some other translucent device that happened to be the exact same size as the sun. Grounded in the word. Let's be grounded in the word. A lot of people teach about grounding, you know, physically in the earth, but let's be grounded in the word lest we be led astray. This study is not aimed at anyone in particular, but to encourage and exhort the body as a whole. Let's start with Genesis. We read this earlier. Let's read it again. Genesis 1.14, and, and Elohim said, Let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night. Now, he's talking about the sun and the moon. And he's talking in a plural sense here. He's talking about both of, about both of them. He said, And let them be for signs. And of course, and for seasons and days and years. But our Heavenly Father, those of you that believe the Bible is true, our Heavenly Father said that the sun and the moon are to be for signs. Yahweh sets the precedence only 14 verses into his word. He is in charge of the signs above through the heavenly bodies he created, not Satan and not certainly man. I could be wrong, but I believe most followers of Messiah would agree that the eclipse was and is a sign. Now, as to its meaning, I'm sure opinions vary greatly. Nevertheless, it is our conclusion that Yahweh alone could have created the sign in the heavens on April 8th, 2024, and I'd like the opportunity to back that statement with Scripture. The passage in Genesis should be enough. However, there's much more to cover. So how could NASA, or let's just call it man, how could man know the exact timing? Of course, it was precise. Uh, if you looked at it, they knew exactly the path of totality. Uh, sorry, my voice cracked. It's so exciting. Uh, uh, they knew the exact path of totality, exactly where you would need to be to see it in total and its totality, and exactly what time uh, of where it would be in the United States. So honestly, this is a fair question. How do they know? How could they be so precise to know the exact path and width of totality? How did the ancient civilizations know when these eclipses would come? Because they did know. The few in power today and even in ancient times mesmerized the common citizen with their godlike knowledge of the heavenly bodies. I mean, think about that for a second. Put yourself thousands of years ago. And if these people in charge knew when it was happening uh, before it happened, and then the people saw that, they'd be like, whoa, how did you know this? You must have all knowledge. For these questions, so what, you know, what, how do they know this? How do they know this? For these questions, we must turn to the book of Enoch. If you didn't know, Jude, the book of Jude, which is in the Bible, quoted Enoch verbatim. Jude one fourteen quoted First Enoch chapter one verse nine, identical uh, as in verbatim, word for word. For those also unaware or unaccustomed with this book, here is an in-depth study. This is a clickable link here as to why many believe it is scripture. Enoch. There is a video coming soon, hopefully this week. In short, Messiah taught from it, as did Peter and Jude, confirming its authenticity. Now, here's the answer as to how the governments and even the ancients knew. First, we must start with a foundation regarding the lights above. This is Enoch chapter 2, verse 1. Observe ye everything that takes place in the heaven, how they do not change their orbits, and the luminaries which are in the heaven, how they all rise and set in order each in its season and transgress not against their appointed order. So the luminaries each follow a prescribed order and do not deviate from their path. This informs us that each heavenly body follows a repeating pattern, which of course can be tracked, cataloged. Next, we will see the fall of some of the angels who rebelled. This is also in the book of Enoch. We're in chapter 6 now. And it came to pass when the children of men had multiplied that in those days were born unto them beautiful and comely daughters. And the angels, the children of heaven, saw and lusted after them and said to one another, Come, let us choose wise from among the children of men and be good as children. This ties directly into Genesis 6. This is Genesis 6. 1 through 2 and verse 4. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, 
and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of Elohim, what the book of Enoch calls the children of heaven, these are angels, saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. There were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of Elohim, these are the angels, came into the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which are of old men of renown. This is the, the reason that uh, we can still find evidence of giant bones today. But back to the point now. So these angels fell from heaven. They rebelled, right? And now we will see what these fallen angels taught men. And Azazel taught men to make swords and knives and shields and breastplates and made known to them the metals of the earth and the art of working them and bracelets and ornaments and the use of antimony and the beautifying of the eyelids and all kinds of costly stones and all coloring tinctures. And there arose much godlessness and they committed fornication and they were led astray and became corrupt in all their ways. Semyaza taught enchantments and root cuttings. Armaros, the resolving of enchantments. Barakihal taught astrology Kokobel the constellations Ezekiel the knowledge of the clouds Arakiel the signs of the earth Shamsiel the signs of the sun and Sariel the course of the moon and as men perished they cried and their cry went up to heaven this is the whole chapter of uh, Enoch 8 so these angels taught men astrology the constellations the signs of the earth the signs of the sun and the course of the moon. They basically took all the secrets of heaven and came down and taught it to men. Brothers and sisters, here is the origin of this type of knowledge. Men were given great power with these understandings. This is why the ruling elite of the world have served these devils over the course of history. These angels receive worship as they desire to be like Yahuwah, and men receive knowledge that brings power and wealth. Truly a wicked agreement. Now here's Enoch 9, 6. You see what Azazel has done, who has taught all unrighteousness on earth and revealed the eternal secrets, secrets which were preserved in heaven, which men were striving to learn. I'll be honest, it gives me, or it grieves me, that so much credit was given to Satan during this heavenly sign. I wonder if these fallen ones rejoiced at the attention and acclaim they received. As a side note, I also don't think it's wise to curse Satan as some did during the eclipse. This is from Ecclesiasticus, not Ecclesiastes, but Ecclesiasticus, also known as Sirach, chapter 21, verse 27. This book, it's not included in the 66 book canon. However, it was included in the 1611 KJV, the Greek Septuagint, and many other Bibles. This is considered scripture, uh, scripture in many canons. So it says, when the ungodly curses Satan, he curses his own soul. Instead, this is probably how we should act, even in regards to Satan. Jude one nine says, Yet Michael, the archangel, when in contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, did not bring against him a railing accusation. So Michael, the great archangel, didn't bring a railing accusation against Satan, but said, Yahweh rebuke you. So let's get back on track here. How could it be the moon? All right. So if it's not Satan, if it wasn't man, how on earth could it have been the moon? We believe the moon eclipsed the sun. To back this claim up with truth and not opinions, nor the teaching of pagan nations, we turn to first Enoch. In Enoch 72, we get a full description of the movements of the sun. Then we read this. This is Enoch 72, 37. And as he rises, this is talking about the sun, so he sets and decreases not and rests not, but runs day and night, and his light is sevenfold brighter than that of the moon. But listen to this. But as regard to size, they are both equal. Er, stop the presses. This certainly is not what NASA nor the education system teaches us. This is kind of what they teach us right here. Just a side note, we don't agree with this diagram. This is what they say. The fact that solar eclipses happen at all is a bit of a numerical coincidence. We don't serve... We don't serve the Elohim of coincidences, do we? It just so happens that the sun is approximately 400 times larger than the moon and also 400 times more distant from the earth. I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't know that we're dealing with approximations here. I can understand why some would depart from this understanding here. There's so much to talk about, but I really don't want to get off subject here. 
So I can understand why some would depart from this understanding. I per I personally witnessed totality, and I can tell you that my eyes and the spirit within me declared that the moon and the sun were the exact, and I mean the exact same size. There is no room for approximately in this equation. Enoch 78.3, these are the two great luminaries. Is talking about the sun and the moon. Now listen to this. Their circumference is like the circumference of heaven. We'll get to that in just a second. But once again, and the size of the circumference of both, the sun and the moon, is alike. Our eyes tell us they are the same size, and so does Scripture. Once again, first Enoch teaches us that the sun and the moon are the same size, but now we know their circumference, which is a measurement of a circle, is like the circumference of heaven. With this, we can turn to Jeremiah 31. Thus says Yahuwah, which gives the sun for a light by day and the ordinances of the moon and of the stars for a light by night, which divides the sea when the waves thereof roar. Yahuwah of hosts is his name. If those ordinances depart from before me, says Yahuwah, then the seed of Israel also shall cease from being a nation before me forever. Thus says Yahuwah. Listen to this. If the heaven above can be measured, and the foundations of the earth searched out beneath, I will also cast off all the seed of Israel for all that they have done, says Yahweh. That's Jeremiah 31, 35 through 37. So Yahweh has clearly stated that no one can measure the heaven above, which also means the sun and the moon cannot be measured, not by man nor by Satan. This is a solid foundation to realize only Yahweh above can do such wonders. The moon, it's a light source. Once again, contrary to the mainstream understanding, the scriptures teach us that the moon produces its own light. Matthew 24, 29, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and listen, the moon shall not give her light. Mainstream education or indoctrination teaches us that the moon simply reflects the light of the sun, but the scriptures say something different. Isaiah 13.10, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. It doesn't say the moon will no longer reflect the sun. It says the moon shall not give, cause her light to shine. Isaiah 60, verse 19, The sun shall no more be your light by day, neither for brightness shall the moon give light unto you. Ezekiel 32, 7 says, And when I shall put you out, I will cover the heaven and make the stars thereof dark. I will cover the sun of the cloud, and the moon shall not give her light. There's actually more, but these, honestly, these should suffice. They all say the same thing. The moon gives its own light. Now, to tie this understanding back with Enoch, here we go. Enoch 78, 17. At night she appears like a man for 29 days each time, and by day she appears like the heaven, and there is nothing else in her save her her light. So here's where I believe some may diverge from the truth. Since it says there's nothing in her except her light, some say the moon is invisible and or translucent, which therefore it cannot cover the light of the sun. Let's reason with one another for a moment. If the moon in fact gives her own light, then it is a light source. Certainly a light bulb cannot be compared to the moon, but think about it for a moment. When the light bulb is turned off, the light bulb remains. So it is with the moon. Even when she is not fully lit, the source of the light remains. We witness the same in nature. Consider the firefly or the lightning bug for a moment. When it lights up, we can easily see it in the night. However, as the light from its body diminishes, it's almost impossible for us to see at a distance. When the light is out, of course we know the firefly is still there. Why would the moon be any different? Here's one last part regarding the mechanics behind the eclipse and how the moon is positioned with the sun found in Enoch 74. In two months, the moon sets with the sun in those two middle gate, the third and the fourth. In this video down here, we explain in detail how we know the sun is currently in the fourth gate known as the uh, when the equinox happens or when it crosses the equator. Those who watch and understand the movements of the moon also know it was in the same gate as the sun during the eclipse, especially those who looked for the new moon sliver last night, uh, April 9th, 2024, as the moon set at the precise location, the same ecliptic of the sun. Stellarium. 
Stellarium is a free open source planetarium for your computer. It shows a realistic sky in 3D, just like what you see with a naked eye, binoculars, or a telescope. Stellarium.org. Here is a quick recording showing the eclipse in action. Remember, the luminaries follow their orders without fail. This is how a program like this could be established. Let's go back. Let's reference Enoch 2.1 before I show you this little quick clip of where I go through Stellarium and show you, in fact, that it was the moon that eclipsed the sun. Observe ye everything that takes place in the heaven, how they do not change their orbits, and the luminaries which are in the heaven, how they all rise and set in order each in its season and transgress not against their appointed order. So let's take a look at this quick clip. I think it's like a four-minute clip uh, showing... Uh, the movements of the moon and the sun. Let's take a look here. Okay, so here we are in a program called Stellarium. If you're not familiar with it, it's a free program to download Stellarium.org. And what this program does is it has the sun, the moon, and the luminaries. Basically, everything that we can see above um, all tracked, all put into a program that is able to reproduce what we can see in the heavens. As we read in Enoch chapter 2, every luminary above follows an orbit or follows a pattern prescribed by Yah that they cannot transgress. So, of course, this information has been uh, disseminated to man. Uh, it's been logged, it's been cataloged, and put into this program here. This allows us to go forward and backward in time to see what the luminaries look like at any time. This has been uh, a massive blessing to those who wanted to look uh, what, what, what was the heavenly pattern back in the time of Messiah. Um, and again, this allows us to actually see that the moon did in fact eclipse the sun. Uh, myself and many others have been using this program for many years. I've been using it for eight years. Um, I've never found any discrepancies in this program, as in, I can look at, I can let's say at nighttime, I can look and look at this program and be like, okay, what's the arrangement of the stars? I can go outside and it's exact. Um, and what I'd like to show you here is, uh, if you can see here, uh, we've got uh, the date here is April 8th. We're in Belleville, Illinois. This is that southern part of Illinois that's called Little Egypt. Uh, and what we're going to see is we'll see the eclipse that happened on the 8th. I'll even show you back on this tw uh, back in 2017, uh, the very same, uh, same thing happened. So we're going to focus on the sun here. And uh, actually, no, we'll leave that alone. We'll leave this. And so what we'll do, it's like 7 in the morning right now. And so we'll kind of just fast forward to around that time. And let's see. You'll see, and what we'll see here, so this is the moon, this is the sun. And we'll focus on the sun now. So as the time is going, this is exactly what we experienced. And you'll see here, we'll back up, we'll see it's getting darker. Now we have totality. And now, as the sun continues, as we know, the sun it moves faster than the moon. And as it's going along, let's focus back on you. As it's going, as time, this is the minute marker right here. So now we're at uh, 3 o'clock, and the moon has completely, or the sun has completely passed the moon. So let's take a look here. Of course, it goes to evening. You'll notice... The moon is pretty far away from the sun now, and it'll continue to get further uh, as the, the day goes on. And so let's actually fast forward to the next day. This was yesterday, at least from the time of making this video. This was last night. And what we'll do is we'll go to right around sunset. And this confirms what a lot of us who follow a loony solar calendar, specifically those who look for the new sliver of the moon, uh, this is exactly what transpired last night when the sun was uh, going down. We were able to see the new moon sliver. So this program tracks, <clears throat> and this is something, again, many of us have been using for many, many years. Now let's go to, just to show you, this program is not messing around. Let's go to 2017. We'll go to August 21st, because this at Belleville experienced both. Let's go or back earlier in the day, and we can kind of see the same thing. Day goes on and boom, there is 
totality. And then it comes out of totality. So brothers and sisters, I just want to share another piece of evidence um, for the investigation. Blessings and shalom. Okay, so here we're back. Um, hopefully that was a blessing to you. Let's just finish up. We're almost done with the, uh, with the study. So the eclipse and repentance. Many of Yahweh's people acknowledge this eclipse was and still stands as a sign of repentance. Perhaps, and just perhaps, it came to prick the hearts of his own people in an unexpected way. I would encourage those of you who may have inadvertently gave man or Satan credit for this eclipse to seek Yahweh's face on the matter. It is Elohim alone who can do such mighty wonders above. Even Satan's lying signs and wonders cannot duplicate what Yahuwah had created. Let's take a look at the book of Job. We're going to start at verse uh, or chapter 38. Who is this who darkens the divine plan by words without knowledge? Now tighten the belt on your waist like a man. And I shall ask you, this is of course the Most High speaking to Job when Job spoke at a turn. So now tighten the belt on your waist like a man, and I shall ask you, and you inform me. Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, if you have understanding. Who set its measurements, since you know? Or who stretched the measuring line over it? Where is the way that the light is divided, and the east wind scattered on the earth? Can you tie up the chains of the Pleiades? This is uh, some of the, the luminaries above. He's asking, can you, can you touch these things? Or loose the belt of Orion, another constellation? Can you bring out a constellation in its season and guide the bear? This is more luminary talk here. And guide the bear with her sons? Do you know the ordinances of heaven? Or do you establish their rule over earth? Perhaps some, like Job, have spoken out of turn. This is Job replying, Behold, I am insignificant. What can I say in response to you? I put my hand on my mouth. I have spoken once, and I will not reply, or twice, and I will add nothing more. Job 42, 2-6, through six, I know that you can do all things, and that no plan is impossible for you. Who is this who conceals advice without knowledge? Therefore, I have declared that which I did not understand, things too wonderful for me which I do not know. Please listen, and I will speak. I will ask you, and you instruct me. I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear, but now my eye sees you. Therefore, I retract and I repent, sitting on dust and ashes. Let's conclusion. Let's finish up here. With this information, we have concluded that Yahuwah is wondrous and mighty in his works and is to be praised for all his creation, including what happened a few days ago. We do not believe that Satan nor man could have pulled off what Yahuwah did on April 8th, 2024. The enemy can only take what Yahuwah has made and distort its meaning and purpose, to which he was partly successful. The world treated it like a party, not knowing it may have been the very sign created for them to invoke a change of mind, heart, and soul. Pray this is a blessing for you. Yahweh will bless you and keep you. Yahweh will make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Yahweh will lift up his countenance upon you and give you shalom, peace. All right, brothers and sisters, blessings and shalom. We're going to end with a song from Left and Right Ministries uh, called uh, The Song of Creation. I pray it's also a blessing for you as well. Check them out on YouTube, Left and Right Ministries. Shalom.
And oh.